how's it going? Hope you're all good. If you're new here, I'm Tori, and this right here is Miss Nancy the Greyhound. I've been wanting to make a different kind of video for a while, and I've been feeling a bit nervous about it. So I've actually already tried to film this video sitting in the van today talking to the camera, and it was just so awkward. I just can't do it. I had a script and everything, and uh, yeah, it was just not working out. So I thought we'll go for a walk. I always feel happiest outside. We can walk and talk. So what I want to talk about is greyhounds. That's actually the reason that I started this channel in the first place. I wanted to show everyone how great greyhounds are as pets. There's so many of them bred every year. In the UK, about 18,000 dogs bred every year for racing. That's obviously a huge number of dogs to rehome. And unfortunately, they are the last dogs to get adopted from animal rescues. So I just really wanted to share with people how great they are, how much fun me and Miss Nancy have and how how much she's added to my life since I've had her. So I thought I should start at the beginning with why would you get a greyhound in the first place? As I say, I had a script written for this. Then when I was gonna do it again, I brought out a list with 10 different reasons written on it and I've managed to lose the list. So let's see if I can remember the reasons. Okay, number 10, they are very adaptable to different living situations. This is totally true. Whilst it might be perfect for a dog to live in a massive house with a big garden and obviously greyhounds love to run. This isn't necessary. They can perfectly happily live in flats. I actually lived in a flat when I got Miss Nancy. And although I was worried that it wasn't the best kind of home that she could have, it was the best home she had ever had. It was the biggest home, the comfiest home. And most importantly, she was with somebody who gave her a lot of time and affection. So if you do live somewhere smaller or just a different kind of place that you're not sure about getting a dog in don't let that be the reason to put you off looking into getting one they all have different personalities some are better suited to the countryside some can really happily live in towns and cities so there definitely will be a greyhound for you if you can just take the time to go and have a look at them number nine they learn new things quickly when you get an x-rating greyhound it is going to be an adult dog but they have such a sheltered existence when they live at the kennels they have no chance to meet other breeds of dogs, to meet many different people, to you know go out into the world and have any different experiences. They're pretty much just locked up in their kennels and maybe go to the races at weekends. So they have a very limited sphere of experience. Everything is new to them, but they just adapt to it so quickly. One of the things they won't be able to do is climb stairs. So as an example, the flat where I was living in was a first floor flat. Nancy Drew obviously had to go up and down the stairs multiple times a day, which at first, presented a bit of a challenge but it was only I think three or four days before she was bounding up and down the bus herself as if she'd been doing it her whole life so yeah they learn fast seven they're really loving and they love people this is totally true despite the fact that they may not come from the best of backgrounds and they don't all get treated very well in the kennels they really do love people Nancy is just never happier than when she's near somebody she does love being near me when you get a greyhound, you really are the only secure thing in their life since they left the kennel. So they can be a little bit clingy. They're gonna to wanna to follow you around and be with you all the time. But once they settle in, I'm really special to Miss Nancy, but she also really loves the rest of my family. She loves my friends. She also loves meeting strangers when we're out and about. So she's just such a lovely dog to have. She also really does enjoy being petted. There's nothing she likes more than having a tummy rub. She lifts up her little paw to ask you to pet her more. She's just so precious. So yeah, they are sweet, loving, gentle dogs. Number six, they don't jump up. This I think is really important for any dog, but especially for a big dog, you don't need to worry that they're gonna knock your ground over when she comes around. It's kind of a learned behavior and it's not something that they will have done at the kennels. So just all the greyhounds I know, they don't jump up. They really are gentle giants who tend to just stand there being very reserved. So if you don't want to have muddy paw prints all over your trousers or lots of threads pulled in all your clothes and you want to be able to take your dog out without being constantly embarrassed that he's running up to strangers and jumping on them, a greyhound could definitely be a good dog for you. Number five, I think we're on five. They don't shed very much. I'm not gonna say they don't shed at all because all animals shed, including Nancy. Human beings shed, as you'll know, if you have a hairy person living in your house, but they shed a hell of a lot less than other animals. I used to have cats and I had fur over all my clothes. 
But with Miss Nancy, the only place that I really see hair is actually in her bed or places that she's been sleeping. It's not really anywhere else. So yeah, fantastic if you don't want there to be hair everywhere. The one caveat to that is that when they first come back, they will have a really big molt. This is them losing their kennel coat that they have to survive in the kennels, which are usually really cold and outdoors. So they are gonna lose a lot of hair at first. After that, really nothing to worry about. Number four, they are super easy to clean. Again, this partially comes down to them having that really short coat and without the under fur. So if they do get muddy, just wait for it to dry, get your brush out and you can just brush it straight off. It's super easy. You're not gonna need to bath them all the time. I'd probably give Miss Nancy a bath like once every six months. She probably doesn't even need it, but I, I, I did it last time because her skin was a bit dry and she had a special shampoo. But yeah, you're not gonna need to worry about constantly taking this dog to the groomers or having to bathe them or any of these things. Great. Now, I'm not sure if this is number four or number three, but while we're on the subject of fur, greyhounds don't smell really doggy. I've sometimes walked into other people's houses and basically gagged at the overwhelming smell of dog that was lurking everywhere. I've never noticed that with the greyhound. I mean, not only do they not smell, they actually smell really good. When it comes to Miss Nancy, I have had this confirmed by several independent witnesses. She smells great. So if you don't really like odor wet dog, greyhound definitely could be the dog for you. Number three, they're used to being handled. This means that it's generally a lot easier to do things to them. They will be used to being handled by their trainers and by the vet at the racing kennels. So Miss Nancy is so good at letting me do things to her. If she has to go to the vet and have something done to her, she, she doesn't love it, but she just lets them get on with it. And it's the same for me at home. So I'm able to try and brush her teeth, to groom her, to clean her ears, to give her medication, to apply medication if I need to do that. And she's just so stoic about it. She usually just puts her head down and just sort of stands there until it's over. And yeah, I mean, I generally end up feeling pretty bad about it in the end, but it does make it a lot easier. I'm not sure if I'm just super lucky with her, but she also takes any medication I give her, either by itself or maybe with a bit of peanut butter on to make it a bit more tasty. She's just such a good girl. I also sometimes have to put a pair of shorts on her to stop her gnawing on her butt and she just lets me do it. And when they're on, she just wanders around like she's not even wearing them. It's so adorable. I'm not sure if this is number two or number one, but either or, greyhounds are very quiet dogs. I mean it, they really don't bark. So if like me, you don't particularly enjoy the cacophony of dogs barking constantly, definitely consider getting a greyhound. I actually wasn't even sure if Nancy Drew could bark for a couple of months. She definitely can. It's just not something that she does all the time. They aren't generally barky dogs. So she only really barks if maybe she sees a cat and gets super excited. She might have a little bit of a bark, but otherwise very quiet. And again, this just makes it so much nicer to take her out. I'll happily take her to any pubs, cafes, shops, anywhere with other people. And I don't need to worry that she's gonna be making a pain of herself, constantly barking like a lot of other dogs that you see. She is just such a good girl. And I'm pretty much always just so proud of her behavior, honestly. She just lies down on her mat. She's quiet, she's good. Oh yeah, absolutely dreamy. I'm not sure if we've got to number one or if we're into the bonuses, but let's go with number one. You've heard it before, greyhounds sleep a lot. Yes, they really do sleep a lot. I think it's true that they probably do sleep up to 20 hours a day. And I mean, it's just fantastic. I've been working at home for a couple of years. So Nancy Drew just lies down in her bed or on the sofa next to me and lets me get on with my work. It's such nice company for me not being by myself, but she's not constantly pestering me for attention. It's just amazing. So yeah, if you want a dog that can chill out and let you get on with what you need to get on with when you're at home, Greyhound, good dog for you. Here's maybe another bonus. Greyhounds don't really need that much exercise. I also don't know any greyhounds that enjoy walking in the rain. So if you don't want to be out for two hours a day, come rain, come thunder with your dog, a greyhound is a really perfect choice. They definitely do need exercise. They need stimulation. They need fresh air. They need the chance to go outside and sniff things. All right, Miss Nancy, having the chance to sniff things. Um, but yeah, depending on the weather, I probably walk Nancy for about an hour and a half a day. It really depends. We walk more in the winter 
she gets too hot in the summer in which case we sometimes just do like a couple of shorter walks as long as they have the opportunity to run around if you have a big garden they can run around there that's fantastic but if not when we started out i used to hire a private field for an hour a week for miss nancy to just have the chance to run around that's plenty one of the things you will find if you get a great hound and start walking them off the lead they don't always want to run around that was one of the big surprises to me sometimes she just really wants to plod so as long as they have the chance like once a week to blow off a bit of steam you're fine ah I think this was supposed to be number nine, but I'm pretty sure this was the last one that I thought of. Greyhounds are good at walking on the lead. And there she is. I've had her walking on the lead next to me this whole walk. I'm actually not holding her very securely. I wouldn't recommend this. I kind of just have her wrapped around my arm like that. But I am good to grab hold of her if she does try to chase something. I didn't want to have her off the lead because I wouldn't be concentrating on her. I'm busy making this video, I'm looking at the phone, and it's not a good idea to have her off the lead if I'm not concentrating on her. I think you need to keep your eye on them. But yeah, she's been totally great, right? I got yanked a couple of times sideways because she was sniffing something, but they're generally very sedate. They don't really pull, which again is brilliant when you're looking at a dog that's maybe around 30 kilograms, maybe more if you have a male dog, you don't really want them like dragging you along the path. So yeah, it makes it a lot easier to be able to walk them in all kinds of different places and they're perfectly happy to be on a lead. So there you have it. I think that is 10, 11, maybe 12 reasons why <laughs> greyhounds make fantastic pets. And they really, really do. They do not deserve to be left on the shelf at the animal rescue. They just make the most fantastic pets. And especially considering the background of trauma that they come from, you know, they've literally been working for years. That's all they've ever known. And they really deserve a loving home to retire to. I can honestly say that all they really want is a comfortable bed and plenty of time, love and patience from you. That's all. Oh, and plenty of food. But they don't ask for much. So if you've got a lot of love to give and you're happy to provide a couple of very comfortable beds and maybe even a sofa, a greyhound is just going to be so grateful for you to be giving them that chance. And they really are so sweet, so loyal, they're just absolutely fantastic. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I would love it if any of you guys that have greyhounds want to share your experiences with your dogs. So write some comments down below and maybe we can have a chat about what makes them all so good. Me and Miss Nancy hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Don't we pig? And hopefully see you next time. Bye. I'm just gonna add a teeny tiny little disclaimer that I shouldn't even have to film, but obviously this is all based on my experience. I can't guarantee that your greyhound would be exactly the same as Nancy Drew, but I do feel like these are characteristics that do apply to most greyhounds and definitely to the greyhounds that I have met.